Hello there, this is Joe Reinhardt and this is a demo from my Cisco CCNA wireless training course from TrainSignal. So just some general test taking tips for success. First, be prepared. Get plenty of rest the night before. Last minute cramming usually doesn't help you. Usually if you don't know it, by the time you're walking to the testing center, a last minute or two of reviewing is probably not going to help you that much. Use legitimate practice exams to test for your readiness. They're widely available. Some are for fee, some uh, smaller ones are not. Don't be afraid to schedule a different time if you're not ready. If you feel like you're not prepared and you don't want to risk paying for an exam you're going to fail, reschedule it. Make sure you do it in, within the time window of rescheduling, but certainly there's no shame in that. And know your way to the testing center well in advance. If you've been there more than once, it's easy. But if you're going to a new testing center, you want to make sure you know where it is, just in case you get caught in traffic or there's anything that may prevent you from getting there in a timely manner. Now, when you're taking the test, just in general, pace yourself. Figure out how long to spend on questions. You'll usually, when you start the test, it'll tell you how long you have and how many questions are involved. You can do some very quick math in your head to just get an average of what you should be spending per question. Now granted, there's some that are very, very easy and some that are a little more involved, but your average should fall somewhat within that calculation that you made in looking at the exam length and the number of time, moments that you have. Obviously, remember that you once you've answered a question, you cannot go back. It used to be that if you wanted to, you could go back and forth in the exam. Then they stopped doing that. Then they allowed CCIEs to do that. And then they stopped allowing that as well. So pretty much when you've answered a question, you're, you're done with it. And don't panic if you're not sure of the answer. Just, if worst case, go with your first guess. And always avoid spending too much time on a single question. I've taken exams where I've tried to be very careful and diligent. And then I've realized I'm almost out of time and I have to answer a lot of questions blindly, which really doesn't help in the process. Now, there are some specific strategies that can help you in taking any actual Cisco exam. First, let the exam itself work for you rather than against you. Some questions only require one answer. Those are usually radio buttons. It's pretty straightforward. And it will tell you how many questions you need to have. The exam will tell you. It'll say select one, select two, select three. By the way, if it's a radio button, you can only answer one question. If there's checks boxes, it's usually more than one. Some questions require several answers. And then there are simulations or simlets, which actually bring up a screen that simulates a device that you have to enter commands into. And usually there are several questions surrounding that. So a simulation is actually a very uh, usually encompasses several questions and there are a number of things that you have to take care of in that. A simlet is a much smaller version of that, but both require attention to the syntax of certain commands. Now, only guess when you have to. Remember, first of all, that no one gets a perfect score. Uh, I've heard of very few occasions when people have come out with a 1,000 or a 100, depending on the way the test is being scored. So don't worry about missing a question or two. When in doubt, always go back to the basics. If you use the basics to help answer a question, it can help you. For instance, if you, if you know what the IP addressing ranges are for private addressing on the CCNA exam, for example, and you see something outside that range, even if you can't remember everything exactly, you know it doesn't belong there. So don't blindly answer or panic, but try to reason through and use instinct. Remember, it's not the end of the world. Even if you don't pass, it's not the end of the world. And that's a good thing to remember. It's what you do, it's not who you are. And if for some reason you don't pass, think of it as a dress rehearsal. The next time you go back, you have a much better idea of what to expect and how to do it. I can tell you this based on personal experience. I've done very well with the standardized tests, but my Cisco CCIE lab exam, it took me five attempts to pass. And I had a lot of dress rehearsals before I finally passed it. So trust me, if I can make it through five CCIE, four CCIE attempts and finally succeeding on the fifth, you can go back more than once and do just fine. So another thing, if you get a little stumped on questions, try to use a process of elimination. Usually, there's a series of answers, even whether it's multiple choice or just one. One answer is usually completely ludicrous, that only an amateur would pick that one, and it's way off base. You can usually pick that one out right away. If you scratch that off, you've automatically improved your odds. Try to eliminate the wrong answers one at a time till you come down to, and if you have to, you may only guess two. It's kind of like who wants to be a millionaire where you can actually just have the answers brought down to two, and it gives you much better odds. Keep in mind that there are two answers that are usually remarkably similar, 
And so make sure that when you get down to that point that you read the questions and the answers carefully so there's not something that you missed. Ultimately, select the best answer for that question. And the best answer is always going to be the Cisco approved answer. Keep in mind that there are some things like, for instance, the word queuing is misspelled in iOS code. So if you pick what would be technically correctly spelled, then you would be wrong. That's just an example. Pay very close attention to wording, understand what it's asking, what it's not asking, and reread the question. Read through at least twice to make sure you actually know what it is that's being asked. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training, please visit www.trainsignal.com.